pits on bagpipes. We're in the huddle. Hit it, Highland High School band. We're on the campus of Highland High School in the huddle, show 15. What a blast. We're going to let the band kick it in for about 15 seconds, soak it all in, and get started on the show. Wow. Thank yes. you, Aaron. Once again, welcome everybody to In the Huddle, our 15th show. What a pleasure to be here on the campus of Highland High School. I'm Vance Palm, your host. This is Stan Green, the Director of School Support Services. Stan, it, it, every time we have another one, I, I announce the amount of shows we've done. This is number 15. It feels like yesterday we started off with the first one. We had no idea what we're doing. You and I still don't know what we're doing, but we have a great, great team of professionals here, some big-time guests waiting to come on, and we have some big-time guests here at Highland High School, the cheerleaders, the band, the bagpipes. I always brag about my Arvin High English teacher that told me to say, it don't get no better than this, right, Stan? So please do some introductions here. Awesome. So we have first-year principal, Melissa Donez. Hi. <laughs> she is an Arvin High grad. Whoa! <laughs> hey, all the bright, beautiful people are from Arvin, right? I, I oh, say that. Whoa. <laughs> I say that all the time. She went to CSUB. Uh, she was involved in cheer, student activities, band, and she has brought a special guest with her. I sure did. This is our amazing and talented ASB president, Rachel Segura. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Ladies, a busy day for everybody, for you as well. Uh, we're only going to have you here for just a few seconds, but Stan, I know you want to talk to your principal here. Yeah, so obviously out of the gate, first year, start your legacy. So what is your messaging for your staff and your students? Um, here at Highland, we truly and honestly believe that everybody belongs on this campus. No matter where you come from, who you are, what you do, you have a place here and you're, you're cared for and you're valued. Super. Rachel, yes. ASB president. We've had some ASB presidents on the shows already. And when we do it on game day like this, it amplifies your daily schedule today. Yes, it's a Let's lot. Let's talk specifically about today, and then we'll get to your, your responsibilities over the year. What about okay. today? What a day. Oh, wow. What a day so far. We actually just finished <laughs> up our homecoming rally. It did it amazing. Our rally chairs are so talented, and everyone involved is just so... They want to be there, and it's just such a fun experience, especially for the ASB that we have this year. Highland High School, it's an older school. If you want to go back, it's one of those original schools, but it has such a great history of support, of enthusiasm. Nothing like Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard is in its own self tonight. Yes. The band's going to be there tonight, a big game. Um, you've got the new aquatic center. Life is good at Highland, isn't it? It's been great. This week alone, homecoming week, I mean, we're up there. We're, we have all the spirit we possible. We're so excited for tonight. Melissa, as a principal of a school like Highland, you know, I walk in the halls coming over here today and the plaques and all of the history here. Um, you've grown up here. You're from here. You went to high school in God's country, so you know all about really prestigious uh, educational values. In your short time here, what is it about Highland? What makes it so unique? Why do people go, oh, man, I went to Highland. I was class of this, a class of that. Well, first of all, we have the best school colors in town. Uh -huh. and, uh, gotta love that royal blue and Kelly green. Um, and, and secondly, it's just, it really is just a gem of the east side. And um, our kids are amazing. The staff is so loving and caring. And it's just a good place where everybody wants to be. And so you get that feeling as soon as you walk in. Love it here. Stan, you've got some... Some business to take care of. Yeah, so talk to us about the pool. The Ooh. pool. We're going to get some swimming going on here wow. soon. We're wow. super excited. What an amazing opportunity um, to have the first pool on a high school campus in the Kern High School District. Wow. We feel really special about that. Uh, we can't wait to use it for all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, it's gonna, and you know what? You're going to do a great job pulling in the community. That's, that's Melissa, in a sense, just bringing everybody together. Uh, the pool is supposed to open sometime this next year, 2025, January, February. Yes. That's what we're hoping. All right, super. Stan, work, can, can the public find this? Can the public see this right here? Yeah, we can link that on our webpage. We're going to link this on the webpage so all of the Highland High School uh, students that are currently here and all the 7th and 8th graders that are going to be coming up here, this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, dare I say some of you students are going to go swimming in this deal right here? <laughs> 
Uh, we're gonna let you go in just a second. Uh, your your afternoon looks like what after this after school gets out? Your afternoon looks oh, like man. what? Oh man, after school uh, I have to get ready for volleyball practice. Whoa. So <laughs> yeah, I have to get through that. Um, try my hardest, do my best for our game on Monday against Ridgeview, and then uh, help set up, get everything ready for tonight's football game, help our spirit commissioners, make sure everyone's ready, make sure our homecoming court's all good and ready to go, and then kick off. Highland High School is in great hands with their ASB president, Rachel, and the principal, Melissa. Ladies, thank you so, so thank very so much. much. We're going to take a short time out and be back with a big shot. Doctors, hit the music. Let's get it rolling here. <laughs> Thank you. That was quick and right to the point. Great job. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. Thank Thanks. You so much. Hey, see you around, yeah? Talk to you later. Okay. So much. Got a lot to cover. That's see you. Right. All right. Nice job, ladies. Nice job. Uh, hey, I'm Matt. Dance. Nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Yeah, right here, buddy. Okay. What year is this? Dance. Nice to meet you. Year four? Uh, year five. Five for him. Oh, it was 20, huh? It was COVID. <laughs> Check, check. We're good. Thank you to the Block Watch Brigade, Dr. Nico Saloum and Dr. Jimmy Talaferra. Thank you, gentlemen, for the great music. We appreciate it. And our cheerleaders. Stan, we've had some heavy hitters as guests. You know, you, the 15th show, we've had, some, we've had some big shots on. But, man, we pulled out all the stops today at Highland High School. The, ta yeah. the, the tables, the whole vibe just got a little heavier and weightier as far as importance and significance. I'm going to let you do all the introductions here, buddy. Royalty. Royalty. <laughs> now <laughs> we're talking. Hey, I'm telling you, that's what we have. We have a section commissioner, Ryan Toss, in his fifth year. Wow. And assistant section commissioner Matt Cezino, also in his fifth year. Fourth, fourth year. year, yeah. Fourth year. Uh, you know, the, the section is in great hands with both of these gentlemen. They're, uh, they're great for kids, and, and I think that that's a, one of the compliments that you can pay people that is in highest regards for me is, you know, if you're good for kids. And both these guys are good for kids. They do a great job in our section. Um, Ryan, I'll start with you. Um, Ever, ever seen this before at the high school level on a Friday? No, this is awesome. So when Stan mentioned what you guys were doing, <laughs> we couldn't wait to come down and see what it's all about. And this is the kind of thing that we love to go out and share, too, to see if other people can try to replicate it. Maybe not match it, but try to replicate it and do their own thing, because this is really, really fun. Matt, tell us about your goals. You, you, you've got short-term goals every week, and then you've got monthly and, and, buy, and then in six months. What are the goals uh, for you and your position and what we have in our section? Yeah, one of, uh, one of our goals in our office is always to put kids first. Always, every decision that we make um, is always scrutinized, right? It's, it's either popular with some and it's, people are scratching their heads, but what we try to do is we try to make our decisions based on what's best for kids. And uh, that, that's the biggest goal that we can do is because we're here to serve and, um, and we're so fantastic. We're so happy to be a part of here at Highland right now and, and see these great kids doing what they love to do. <laughs> you got to talk over it, boss. I know, you got to go right. over it. Hey, well, I wanted to let them have their moment. Uh, you got it. So, uh, you know, you guys have done a tremendous job since you got in the section. You had the women's conference last year, and then you had the first ever AD conference a couple weeks ago for the section. Uh, other than this event being the greatest thing you've mm -hmm. ever been at, of course. There you go. Uh, what are some of the great things that you look forward to seeing every year? You know, Obviously, the athletic events are great, you know, and seeing Aaron on the bagpipes reminded us we saw him at cross country a couple of years ago, and, and that's a highlight that we still talk about in our office. Honestly, cross country is one of our favorite events because of how many students are there supporting other students. Everyone's competing, but at the end of the day, they're rooting for each other too. And so that's a highlight for me. Um, I don't know about Matt, but we actually really enjoy coming down for the Peak Awards that you guys put together wow, every man. spring because it's not just about athletics. And... Anytime you can engage students, whether it's band, whether it's cheer, whether it's drama, those are all pluses for the community. Wait, did you, so did you say cheer? Did he say... <laughs> too easy, too easy, hey, too easy, too cheer, easy. Cheer, dad. So I gotta, oh. I gotta say it, I gotta say it. <laughs> okay, got it. So. <laughs> Next week is Officials Appreciation Week. Yep. Officials Appreciation Week. Talk to us about that. So yeah, next week uh, um, all around the country we're going to uh, have schools... Um, 
you know, do some steps to make sure that uh, the, those people that help us play games are appreciated. Um, some schools are doing things like bringing them dinner or, or a snack or just, just a, a, a PA announcement before their games. I, the CIF has given um, coins, and we've given some to, to Kern uh, earlier today, some coins to recognize uh, officials and all the hard work that they do. Without them, we can't have games. And so we want to make sure that they feel valued, not only next week, but uh, throughout the rest of the season. I think that's excellent. Our officials at every one. So, guys, we, we know you came down here. We appreciate your time being here. Uh, we can't thank you enough. And to have you on this show means a lot to us. So I want everybody to make some big-time noise for our two special guests, Ryan Matt. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Safe travels. Thank you so much. Doctors, hit the music. Second quarter coming up right after this. Woo! That was quick. Just having you here means a lot. Perfect. Good job. Happy to do it, man. Hey, doctors, give me one more time. Doctors, give me some more music one more time. Okay, here you go. That's yours right there. We get situated here. Hi, VP. Hi, I'm Vance. I'm Alexis. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. All right, thank you so, so very much. The Black Watch Brigade under the direction of Dr. Nico Saloum and Dr. Jimmy Talaferra. Well, that was great to have the significance of Ryan and Matt here. We're in the second quarter of our four quarters. We're right on time, and we bring in our all-knowing, all-seeing high school athletic savant, and he is a man that does a lot, a lot of work and puts together a lot of information. You've known him for the last 10 years. He's been all over the community. We're lucky enough to now have him in the Kern High School District and the Kern High Network working for us. Trevor Horn is with us. Trevor um, we've got a lot to get to, and in the fourth quarter, we do all of our picks with uh -huh. head football coach Mike Gutierrez, but why don't you introduce these two great student-athletes sitting here? So to your right is Xander Orozco. He is the commissioner spirit here on campus. Wow. Just got done with the homecoming rally. Wow. Yep. And then Alexis Jackson, senior volleyball player, outside hitter, middle hitter for the Scots, who are getting ready for uh, two big games next week, both on the road at Ridgeview, and then Wednesday. Against the drillers. Oh, so Trevor, um, I believe you're going to be on that call. I, I will be on that call that night, Vance. You're going to call that volleyball match between the drillers and the Scots. Why don't you start with your volleyball player? So, how, Alexis, so far, I mean, how excited are you for this season? You guys, you know, a little bit of ups and downs, but how enjoyable has it been for you guys so far? I, I feel like, like, everybody has connections, and I feel like that, that really it's so much fun to play, and it's so much fun to watch to play, too. And then now that you guys are three matches into league, where do you feel like you guys are finding your cohesion against the other teams in the league? I feel like they're definitely more challenging teams, but we, we have it with our energy and our skill. I feel like we definitely have them. Yeah, and obviously this doesn't help when you have, when you have the cheerleaders and in and, and, and your student section cheering you on at home games. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the rally today. Xander, with you, uh, Commissioner Spirit, what... Tell us your role as Commissioner of Spirit here um, in Highland. Well, as Commissioner of Spirit, rally isn't exactly my thing. That's okay. our rally chairs. My, uh, my job in ASB is mostly for uh, the games that we have, the home games. So like tonight at the homecoming game will be where I really shine. Um, basically, I just lead our student section, which is right in the middle. Um, and I just try to bring spirits, all of the students, and hype up our players. It's our current high game of the week. You guys are playing the Big Bang Drillers. They're 5-0. Yeah. Oh, you guys are 4-1. How big of a student section are you going to get? And exactly how loud do you guys get? Um, <laughs> well, obviously, I don't know for sure, but hopefully louder than that and a lot more people. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll be – I mean, it is a very big game, so I'm sure we'll have a big section, um, which will be really fun to lead and really fun to have and just as loud as I can get them. Alexis, um, Rachel just talked about volleyball practice right after school today. How quickly do you get out of volleyball practice, get in the shower, get ready, and come back for the game? 
Um, well, I'm also an ASB, so I have to wow. stay here right after practice. So you have no choice to go home. Your whole day is booked till 10 o'clock tonight. Yes. But you wouldn't want it any different, would no. you? Of course not. Uh, Xander, for you, what makes being a Highland Scott so special? Um, it's hard to say one thing. I mean, everything. Everything from the players, the people, the teachers, everything about this school is pretty great. Same question for you, Alexis. I mean, Highland, you know, you guys are kind of up here in the corner, kind of away from everybody else. But what makes this campus so special to you? I feel like everybody just knows everybody. I mean, you've heard of everybody on campus, and I feel like a lot of people are friends, even if, like, you don't see them very often on campus. And that's not normal for a, a school this size for people that don't know your campus is about 2500 to 2700 students so there's a lot of kids on this campus but you still feel that like you, every you know everybody feeling that that mentality here on this campus how does that happen with so many kids is it does that come from the administration down does it just come from you guys as a student body what is it i feel like with all the activities that are hosted here uh, everybody just sees people around and they're like oh hey i know them I want to start by saying anybody that has an X and a Z in their two names, that's pretty hip right there, an X and a Z, Xander or Roscoe. I want to find out from both of you, same question you can both answer. What are your plans after high school? I want to hear, hear what the, the, the thought is, at um, least. After high school, I really want to try to get into a nice college and just take somewhere from there. I don't have any specific set plans, but just wherever life takes me, I guess. But Alex I definitely want to go to college. boy, Alexis? Um, I want to obviously get into a good college. I feel like that's everybody's dream. But uh, I want to study biology. Okay. And I want to go through that. With volleyball here in Kern County, it's really strong, very strong at the high school level. Coach Ferreira up at Bakersfield College every year, perennial winners. The Big West is where the CSUB plays. That volleyball life down there in the Big West is huge. Any aspirations to play after high school? I feel like that's always the hope. I, I don't, I'm not 100% with it. I really like sticking with schooling and stuff like that. But if, it, if it's in the future, then it's in the future. Well, you both have a very big afternoon. You have a big night ahead of you. Um, as Trevor said, our high school football game of the week is tonight. I'll be on the call up top, so I'll be able to see everybody doing their thing tonight when, uh, when the drillers come to town. So I'm sure you're going to be crazy. I'm sure you're going to put on a great show. Hey, everybody, let's hear for our two very special guests today. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for Doctors, let's hear some music and get into the third quarter. All right, excellent, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I know you guys both. I called your first game when you guys uh, blew up on my uh, my RV Bears. And I don't think I've been back to Highland yet, have I? No, that was East High. We haven't been game of the week. Yeah, well, oh, right. Highland East, right? East, right. Now. I'm hoping to get right. All right. Oh, we have some special guests with us. Get that mic close, fellas. Um, our first game of the week this year. Uh, was East High School at Highland, and we made the call. And honestly, the blades hung in there for a bit, but then there were two guys by the name of Preston Mendez and Johnny Brooker that just blew it wide open. And guess what? There are two guests. Trevor, take away the introductions here. All right, to your right, we got one of the top wide receivers in the central section, Johnny Brooker. He's got eight receiving touchdowns this year, and I think I saw a pick six two weeks ago against Porterville, didn't I? Yes, sir. And then to my left is the sophomore sensation, Preston Mendez, starting quarterback for the Highland Scots. Yes, sir. Johnny, I want to I I start with you because you're the senior. Okay. Uh, three wins last year. Not a lot of fun. You guys already have four wins this season. You guys started off the season 4-0. And likely could have been 5-0, and but, you know, some things kind of went awry against Porterville. How exciting has this year for the first half of the season been for you guys? Oh, it's just been so exciting with all my guys winning games and, you know, scoring on all these other teams. It's just been, like, an amazing season so far. 
Preston, for you, yeah. did you have nerves going into that first game against East High being at your first varsity start? Nah, I was confident in my guys, and we've put in so much work over the offseason. I knew we were, what the outcome was before we went in. See, and that's great. That's one thing I noticed out of you in July and August in practice. You really commanded the huddle. You commanded the line of scrimmage, and it's it, you're very poised for a sophomore. For you, how, how, how enjoyable has the season been thus far for you guys being 4-1 and, and having – a game tonight against the 5-0 and o Drillers, and you guys have such a big audience sitting there waiting to see what happens tonight just a few hundred yards away. It's exciting, man. I just love to do it. It's just great because last year when I came up, I tried to do my best, but we ended the season short, but I feel like this year we'll do a lot better. What's you know, been, Johnny, for you, what's been the biggest change for you guys this season? compared to last season? I think, honestly, it's just, like, the explosiveness on the offense. Because last year we had a great defense as well, but this year the, the offense is just working on all cylinders, so it's really keeping us in games, letting us win games. And obviously one of those keys to the offense is Austin Hernandez, and Austin had that ankle injury in the first quarter against Porterville, and you guys, you know, the rhythm seemed to be a little bit different from your offense. Getting Austin back into the fold tonight, how big is that for you guys to be able to be as balanced you guys have been this year? Oh, it's great. I feel like... Again, we're just going to play amazing. Everybody comes together really well. So he's also a key part. So now that he's good, we'll be fine. Okay. Uh, you know, guys, before the first game of the season, the game of the week, we had the head coach, Mike Gutierrez, on In the Huddle, on our very first In the Huddle show at the Kern High School District. And we asked him some fun questions, some serious questions, and some fun ones. And one of the quasi-fun questions I did ask him was, what do your players know? What do they know is an absolute no-no with you? What's going to set you off, Coach Gutierrez? And he said, it's the little things. It's the small things. They better have all their equipment. They better be ready to go. And now that we're going into week six, have you guys put all those small little hassles behind you? Because the big man is right there, and he's coming on the show right after this. Are all, is all your uniform and all your cleats and everything ready tonight? Tell me yes. Mine is. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Most definitely. Hey, I want to ask a quick football question. Um, on the call tonight, uh, Kenny Calvin will be with me, a BHS driller. Um, he, there's going to be a lot of blue. There's going to be a lot of blue on that visitor's side as we look at that beautiful aquatic center. We're going to see a lot of driller fans. Uh, we've, we've kind of agreed as a network that this will be obviously the biggest game of the year that we've had on the Kill 9 Network, no question about it. Um, has, has there been any change has there been any change in the vibe at practice? Has there been any kind of, has it been amped up any, any more intensity or is it just business as usual? I'll ask both of you and then we'll let Trevor close it out. Um, I think, yeah, every week, it, I mean, every week it gets more and more amped up as we get closer to the playoffs and, you know, we got to get better every week. So I think it's definitely getting more amped up. QB? Yeah, I feel like it's definitely changed. Every week we just strive to get better and we're very happy to be able to play a 5-0 and team and I think we're going to win tonight. Close it out, T. Johnny, it in one sentence, what's the key to a Scots victory tonight? Stop number two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great game I think game everybody plan. needs to do that. That's a great game. I'm taking notes so I have it for my game tonight. Stop number two. That's nice. Preston? Not this number two, obviously. They're number sure, two. For yeah. you, Preston, what, what's the key for victory tonight? Get number nine out of the game. Okay. They've got the, uh, the numbers figured out. Hey, uh, fellas, on a day like today, I know there's a lot going through your head, but we appreciate you taking the time to be here. We cannot wait for this call tonight. It's going to be a great one. Let's hear it for Preston Mendez, Johnny Brucker. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, good luck, fellas. I'll see you down on the field. Yeah. Another good one. Thank you. A little slack for you. Oh, wow. Good segment, T. Hey, buddy. How you doing? What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Hey. Adam? Is that it? Thank you, Black Watch Brigade, under the direction of Dr. Nico Saloum and Dr. Jimmy Talaferra. They will be performing this evening. Well, well, well. We meet again. We meet again. The head coach of the Highland Scotsman, who was our very first football coach guest on In the Huddle, 
And we're back with head coach Mike Gutierrez. Coach, um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's hear it for the head coach here. I'll start it off, and, and then I know Stan and Trevor want to talk to you. I talked to the players just a second ago, and I asked them both if this week was any different. And you as a player and a longtime coach, and you know those games that you would have as a player, you knew on the calendar – you know, maybe in your younger days as a player, you would just get a little more amped up. But as the head coach of the Scotsman, going into a big night tonight, the big blue crew's coming up here. Um, do you think there's a different intensity, or is it, of course, business as usual? We, we tell our guys every week our goal is just to be better than the previous week. Um, and so we, we've tried to stick with that mantra so we don't blow something out of proportion and there's one big game and all of a sudden you don't know what to do to react. You know, I tell our guys... We're never going to say we want seven wins or we want a league title because then what do you do after that? Um, so we've been fortunate to play in some big games this year, and we've told our guys that, hey, we've been in games like this, but it's also a different game because BHS is different than Kingsburg. They're different than Porterville, uh, and it does have some league ramifications. So uh, our guys have definitely done a great job of understanding that this may be one of the bigger games Highland High School has been in. I mean, how many times have you Highland been able to say that they're playing BHS for one of the bigger games and we try to put that in perspective for them uh, and I think they definitely understand the special things they're doing so far this year. It is going to be a crazy one. We're going to do a bunch of picks but both of these gentlemen, I'll give you one question for the coach before we do the picks. One question. Are you, are you ready, big fella? I'm ready. I'm Go ready. for it. Okay, so <laughs> we talked about this league probably being the toughest league in town Yep. and you have historically one of the best programs in the state and that's your first game You've had two weeks to stew on the Porterville game. Are you where you need to be? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we, we definitely still have those midseason injuries that we want to make sure that we're, we're taking care of. But mentally, our guys have done a great job of moving on to the next play, something we say every day. And those two weeks definitely gave us time to clean up things from Porterville uh, and also look at the things we've been successful at. So uh, we couldn't be happier with the way these guys, rather than get upset or get down, they've moved on and say, that how, how do we get better and how do we build this, not necessarily for this week, but to hopefully extend it to a long season. Very good. T, one question, brother. We've been talking about it all season. Has your schedule thus far given you the ability to get up for a game of this magnitude? Because you've already played at Kingsburg. You've already played at Kennedy. You've already played at Porterville. And now you get the drillers tonight. Do you feel like those games before this one have built them up and the game has already slowed down for you? Oh, for sure. And, and that's part of the reason we said it this way was that we wanted to be able to go in the playoffs with having played some really good teams and some competitive games rather than kind of all limping in or playing in blowouts. So for us to not only play in them, but to be able to get some victories and, and play to the very end, uh, I think is a great experience for our guys. And, and that's what we want is just to keep playing the next play and keep getting better and, and learning from the experience. And again, hopefully we can extend this season a little longer into November. Okay. To all of our cheerleaders and band, we appreciate you being here so much. Very, very cool. What we do now is about seven to eight minutes. It's all we have left, and we're going to be done. But we're going to run through a bunch of picks, so we appreciate your patience. We appreciate your time, and we've got some pretty cool swag to toss out when we're done, just to that part of the crew right there. So this segment right here, we're going to hit it, and we're going to get going. Trevor, give us a quick recap on last night, and then we'll pick the games. And, Coach, all you have to do is just say the name of the team that you think is going to win tonight. Oh, man, you guys are making me do this? Hey, you hey. know it. <laughs> Hey, look, oh, look, man. look, look. You, I don't want to upset don't anyone in town. <laughs> you won't be the first. You won't <laughs> be the first. And by the way, uh, who was it? Uh, PJ, uh, who? Um, no, who was the Miramonte coach? He said, I'm oh. not, we never pick Foothill here. Oh, Christian Johnson. Yeah, Johnson man. said, we never pick Foothill here. Foothill wins. Oh, we, our phone blew up. It blew up. <laughs> so, hey, we'll have a little fun. Trevor, what happened last night? All right, so we had three games uh, in town. The North was at Arvin. North had a 14-0 lead. Arvin reels off 24 straight. And Andrew Rosales threw 200 yards, 150 those to Xavier Brooks. 24-14 win for Arvin. To hatch became oh, down Hold, hold on, hold on. Say, say it one more time. What was the, the, the conclusion of that Arvin game? Sorry, everybody. Vance loves Arvin. Arvin won last night. Let's move on. Thank you so much. No, because both of these cats right here, they're texting me. I'm going, you're both against Arvin? Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Keep going. Great game last night. Tatchby came down the hill, opened up league play with a 35-0 win at East wow. High. And then South was at home last night, also in a league opener. And they defeated West. This game was 14-14 at one point. South pulled away at the end, 31-14 win for the Spartans. Spartans looking good. Okay, pick time. Let's go, T. Let's ramble. All right, we're going to start off first. Kern Valley is at Desert. Kern Valley, they, uh, they got an easy one here. Desert is actually ranked the last place in the central section. They actually played an eight-man team two weeks ago. I got Kern Valley winning this one easily, 21-6. to Coach? Uh, we'll go Kern Valley. 
Stan? Kern Valley. Next up, Trevor. Miramonte at Foothill. Love this Ooh. game. Love opening up league with this game. Nathan Gonzalez has been one of the most productive backs in the central section for the Lions in a league where everybody is 2-3 and three right now. The Lions strike first. Miramonte, 28. Foothill, 21. Coach? I'm taking Stan's advice saying a tie. I worked at both those schools. And a tie? I have some history there. Boy, that lets me really know. That lets me know about you, hey, Coach. So Miramonte, or Foothill, has inboxed us every week because we pick against them. <laughs> we got four messages last week that we picked against Foothill. Miramonte. Hey, what's the what's worse to being what's worse to being talked about? Not, Not being, being talked about. Hey, You're just send him my email, Stan Green at yeah, Kern yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, next up, Trevor. The Golden Valley at Del Oro, another league opener. Carson Parr has been leading the way offensively for the Bulldogs. They seem to be rolling in the right direction. I've got Golden Valley and winning this one, 28-12. Coach Gutierrez. Golden Valley. Stan. Golden Valley. Next up, Trevor. All right, Shafter and Taft in the SSL opener. Marion Sloan probably didn't sleep well this week, and he's probably going to take his frustrations out on Taft this week. I've got Shafter winning this one 42 to 6 after that loss for the Generals last week. Coach Shafter. Tr- yeah, Stan. Shafter not going to be close. T Horn. Uh, another game that might be a running clock in the end, sadly. Uh, Bakersfield Christian ranked 14th in the section at Ridgeview, who still has not won a game this year. I've got BCHS winning this one 49 to 14. Coach. Uh, Bakersfield Christian. Stan. Yes. No, I'm not going to pick this game. You're not going to pick that game? All right, very good. <laughs> Trevor Horn, Garces versus Centennial. Yep, so Garces is uh, technically one and four now because a game that they lost in the first week to Pericle became a forfeit after an eligible player for the Spirit. So the Rams winless uh, on the field at number 19 Centennial, who we were just talking might be grossly underrated Ooh. in the central section rankings right now at four and one. Uh, this is going to be a big win for the Golden Hawks. I've got them winning 42 to seven. Coach Gutierrez. Same Centennial. Stan. Jason Grant over 200 yards and four touchdowns. Probably. <laughs> what a machine. It's actually pretty easy to That's call that half. one. Yep. What a machine. Trevor. Number eight Frontier at mm. Stockdale mm. tonight, who is one and four freshman. Carson Queen will get the start for the Titans, replacing injured Brady Campbell. <sighs> Look for some wildcat there with Malcolm Watkins. Uh, Running the Wildcat, too, for the Titans tonight. But I think this one's going to get out of hand early. I've got Frontier winning this one, 35-13. Coach? Yeah, I think Frontier has it. Yeah, Frontier back in town, getting there. Yep. And the big game, Trevor. Well, tonight, we've got the number six ranked and undefeated BHS Drillers right here. At number 21, four and one, Highland Scott. This one has all the makings of an enormous showdown tonight. Two great young quarterbacks, two great running backs, two great defenses. I love this game, but I'm going to let you guys pick it first. Yeah, you should. Coach, who do you think is going to win tonight, Coach? <laughs> hey, I, I got confidence in our guy. I'm, I'm really, really proud of the way we practice, so I'm excited for us to get on the field. Stan? So I was at Jockey Club on Tuesday with Rashawn Sheehy, builder of men. Thought on Tuesday I was going to go with the drillers, but after sitting here with Mike, I'm going with Highland. Wow. (laughs) Trevor? Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's taking off the headset. He's taking off the headset. He's putting on the headset. What? Uh, Who did Trevor take? Look at him. (laughs) Uh, Looks like you were very popular there, Vance. Very popular. It's going to go over well. Hey, somebody's having a white truck. (laughs) Somebody's got to play that role. Somebody's got to play that role. Um, the interesting part is I'm on the call tonight with Kenny Calvin, another driller. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be a fabulous, fabulous game tonight. There's going to be a lot of energy on that field. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We thank appreciate you guys. it. This coach, awesome. Mike Gutierrez is your head coach right here. Thank you. Appreciate thank you guys. it. Yep. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, man. That's going to be a wrap. However, we're not closing until we have the main man come back up here and close us out on the bagpipes because I can assure you, there's only one guy doing it on the bagpipes. Let's let the doctor and those guys get warmed up. We'll let them get warmed up, and then we're going to let Aaron Pitts close it off one more time. Okay, tonight, game of the week, 730. BHS right here on the campus at Highland. 
October 9th, Wednesday, next Wednesday, Trevor will be on the call. Highland at Bakersfield Volleyball will be in the huddle next week as well. So I'm going to let these guys finish theirs and get ready to go, Aaron. Doctor, thank you to the Block Watch Brigade. Appreciate it under the direction of Dr. Nico Saloum and Dr. Jimmy Talaferra. Thank you to Kateras. You cheerleaders are awesome. We'll see you tonight. Close this out. Aaron Pitts, thank you for being in the huddle. Hi, Brad Hole.